literally oh, episodes yeah, straight. Yeah, I know. Um, and then I need to throw this in the door really quick, and then we'll be good. Even though I believe we are live. Look at everyone on their phones. Like, yeah, nothing, I'm nothing's going on right now. We're, we're live, we're though. Live. Yeah, we are live. You, you can show some goddamn professionalism. Like, remembering the power brick to the system we're supposed to be playing that day? Oh, yeah. Or the sensor bar? Okay, to be fair, sensor bar is not used with half those games. Anything no, we're going to use I a have, Wii remote. I have Wii U and a Wii here. You don't even have to bring systems. Wow, we'll play them Neo Geo games though. For the oh yeah, those Turbo Graphic games. I don't really Turbo Graphic. I want Turbo Graphic. It's real bad. I do. It's garbage. It's not garbage. garbage. Yes, it is. I know you do. I know where you get it. He still got that copy of Bonx. Uh, Where'd you get it? Awesome. Uh, oh no! Well, shout, no yeah. shouting out other game stores on here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you edit that out? Yeah, I can. We're okay. gonna edit out this whole beginning. All right, but uh. Everyone, welcome. Peace, witch cop. Peace, witch podcast. Yes, it's a oh, show about fish. Mary it's fish already miss. a train wreck. Yeah, Mary peace, witch podcast miss. week three. You already know John. You already know AJ. You know wreck. me, but you haven't met this man right here, who actually wrote all the original entries for the Pokedex. I and did. His name's Austin. He had no kidnaps uh, children. Yeah, but uh, either way. Before we get started with the official podcast tonight, which is going to be dubbed, uh, your video game company is bad. And you should feel bad. And you should feel bad. Who are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about the name of the podcast that's going to go up this week when it goes on YouTube. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, your video game company is bad, and you should feel bad. Okay, I can live with that. But uh, our, our mutual like friend group, the Ohio Retro Gamer, uh, yeah, they, they had a Christmas special, and... We're gonna do. We're gonna open up all our Christmas presents we got from them. I'm sure the term is called Secret Santa. Secret Santa. No, Christmas what? special. Christmas. It's like on Christmas ABC. Special. It's like on ABC. It's on ABC. Yeah, you might have seen Stop uh, the Star Wars Christmas special. It's just like that. Exactly. Yeah. A train wreck. Yep. Oddly um, enough, I look the shortest here. If you look at the screen. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm. Because you're chilling in the comfy chair. Yeah. I am in a comfy chair. You're, you're in vape position. I am in vape position. Okay, so we're doing the Secret Santa. Yep. Um. None um, of us have seen what's in these yet, you know, but we obviously sent our gifts out to other people and they already got those and opened those, but we figure what the hell, we'll open them up uh, on the podcast, so AJ, let's go left to right. Yeah. AJ can go first. Yeah, I'll go first. It depends on what hey, you're AJ, AJ's got a tube. I have, I have a tube and a box. Is it a tentacle? I hope it's a tentacle. Uh, oh, it's a wall scroll. Oh, it's Super Mario 3. Well, they show were, the kind one, folks. Two, yeah. <laughs> they, they really ripped off that CM Punk oh, one. It's like the exact same off. thing. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that is. Oh, that's that's really good great color. in the game room. Yeah. That's, 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 hey, here, pull over this way, because... Yeah. Get, get, get rid of John. Right in front of John. That's fine, I'm texting. Uh, don't watch him text. Watch yeah. Mario. All right, all right, there we go. Olé, so, olé, olé, olé. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got... The Super Mario Brothers 3 wall scroll. Awesome. And what's in the box, man? What's in the box? I thought we weren't allowed to shout out. Oh, I didn't shout out anything. That's a quote from a movie. Yeah. What movie? Uh, I can't think of it. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's just another YouTuber. He doesn't do a podcast. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. No, I guess you do. The... This one, oh, it looks for guests. No, what's in the box? It was with, uh, was it Keanu Reeves in that? No, it's, uh, is it Pitt? Because like, he's like asking what's in the box. Because it's like it ends up being like his wife's head or something. Oh, it's you. I can't prepare. Yeah, you did. You should have brought the knife wrench. Well, one I of these days the I will be prepared for everything that's going on. No, you it's won't. Just, my life is hectic right now, sir. I've got a birthday in two weeks. You can cut me some slack. If I know when my weeks. birthday's coming up. Life gets nuts. <laughs> Dude, it does for me. I have to eat all this cake and then go out to dinner. And get these presents. I didn't get to do the first two of those things. I got a box NES cleaning. That is a cool one. Yeah, that's I nice. actually I've never seen one of those boxed. I have, I've had a couple. There's a couple What's different the versions. Game? I got Top Gear, which I did not have. Nice. That is a good game for my render. I was hoping you were going to get like a rip label game so you had a mystery. Oh, Star Race FX. Nice. Yeah, you I got really good anything. Christmas. Hell yeah. Free pro. Shut up. <laughs> oh, and I got some Link Sours. 
Those are cool. Those are cool. Yeah. I, you know, I've owned a couple of these cleaning kits. I have never, never actually seen. owned this particular box art one. Mm -hmm. This one's a cool one. So thank you for Because most, most of the time they're pretty boring. My toy secret Santa for putting me one step above John. I might actually have a, a different one up on the shelf nope. over there, but I've never seen that box. That's yeah, a that cool was, box, dude. Awesome. Definitely a good job by my secret Santa. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess it's Next. my turn. That was assault. We have it on camera. I don't know where my box went. Uh, right next to you. Oh, no, no. You can't hand that to me. It's next to you. Give him the box. I can't reach that. Okay. Uh, in all honesty, mine has been opened by Kayla. <clears throat> I did not see what it was, and then she resealed it. Yeah. Probably knew it was in my tube, but not was in the box. I bet she does. <laughs> I bet she does. She does. Family team. friendly, family friendly podcast. Let's make this. Since when? We just had complaints from me about this. Okay. I've listened to two or three of these, and they are not that family friendly. I don't friendly. know what this is. Oh, oh that's dude. awesome. That is pretty cool. I'll put that right there for the podcast. New mascot. What else is that? That is dope. Mr. Rossetti. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. And. Oh, the Mario Pez. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. That is... I like that a lot. I'm just going to set them in front of me. That's... Oh, wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Happy holidays from your Torg Secret Santa. Oh, oh boy. And this little figure. I think you're getting That's married again. That's a King toy. And this little figure. He's triggered now. I think you're getting married again here. I hope so. <laughs> that little guy. Dude, if you have one of the ones I'm missing, I'm stealing it. I don't think I have the one of them. Oh, he lights up too. Yeah. Right, I made a semen. I'm having a hard time. I'm really struggling. Now imagine if it was your birthday. It'd be even worse. I don't know what this is. I'm getting a pin. Yeah. Legend of Zelda Majora's Master. It is a pin. Uh, Dude. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, that was the pack in. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's cool. Thing. I guarantee I know who your secret Santa was. Follow that up. I'm saying it was Rachel. You think I had Rachel? I think so. Uh, yeah. I that think. is so cool. I love. I love this stuff. That makes sense. I love little tchotchkes. I hide these that, all around the that shop. Noise. Do you do? Yeah, there's little guys all over the place. I'm not. I, I've never oh, you're not gonna them. find them. I think there's only like two out right now because I kept uh, people were stealing them. I I'm not surprised by that. Super cool. I love this so much. I know. I played with that thing for hours. All right. Well, let's get to the yeah. podcast. Oh. All right. <laughs> Oh. I got I got a package. Who? I don't know. It says Frigile. I it. love this. Whoever this was, thank you very much. This is too cool. I love I the tchotchkes. I know. I have a feeling I know what mine is. Let's take this away from Brian. He this almost lost his fingers actually. just now. I like that a lot. This was not what I was expecting. Not at all. Frigile. Ooh. That makes noise, though. And, yeah. Well, what my, my, my things were... What am I a fan of? I'm a fan of... Castlevania, I'm a fan of Yakuza, yeah. Yeah. Bullet Club stuff. Cool, I can always use another copy of uh, Dracula's Curse. I love this game. It's very good. Oh, yeah. And there's... What is this? And I actually did need this one. N64? This, yeah. On the N64 Castlevania. You bubble bubble wrap. wrapped. Tough. Hey, it's not the bubble wrap. It's the tape. It's uh. the operator. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, come on. I don't know. These yeah, in Castlevania on the sixty four. This kind of classes yeah. up the podcast, man. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. And that is all I got, which is fun because I needed one really bad. I really like that box art, man. He's gonna try and steal it, it from me. It is very nice. I don't collect anymore. I would <laughs> honestly. I probably would try and take this from. I've got a box protector. I'm waiting for it. I got one mm -hmm. if you want one. All right, so. I believe we are done with the unboxing. Thank you for all who showed up to watch the unboxing. I don't know if anyone did. Um, but I think we need to move on to the main course, obviously. Which is John ripping the box. It was like that. That's a you think lot. I don't know how to open something to CIB? Yes. Okay. That's fair. Because it's all sitting CIB just in your case right now. Alright, we're going to start off with the podcast, which is, your video game company is bad and you should feel bad. We're looking at big blunders that video game companies have made. Well, not even just big, even small ones. But, um, I'm going to find that tab. And there are two subjects that are completely off the, uh, 
the schedule this week that we're just not doing, and those are the the the, yeah, the, the Nintendo PlayStation because that deserves its own podcast. Agreed. And we're not doing the fall of Atari because that also deserves its own podcast. Well, the fall, yeah, Atari. Uh, that's going to be a long topic. Just and it's know. not even just the video game crash. It goes so much further. Yeah, I mean, it's you know how just the way they produce games, uh, they destroyed home gaming in the, the US, United States. I mean, mm, um, they were part of it. They were a major part of it. Yeah. it, it was, Let's yeah, not have it any quality control there. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, tonight it's just going to be, and whether it be a decision they made with a console or a uh, accessory decisions. or games, games, yeah, whatever it may be, you know, each of us picked two except for him. Yeah, and AJ yeah, doesn't one? like to. Yeah. AJ's the rebel. Look at him. Why do you have this one? young buck stuff? Do you, you could. I could have given you a list. You told us you had like, well, I got 30. It doesn't matter what you guys pick. No, I said he had 30. Well, steal one of his. He doesn't have any. Yeah, well, so I'm, doing I'm just going to. I'm just going to. All right, all right. So, John's doing three. I have two. AJ has one. Start so since AJ's. John, you know, since John has three. I don't have three. I only have two. Someone else go first. You're an ass. Brian goes first. All right, fine. I'll go first. You're the host. I, I am the host, to be fair. I have to keep things organized and orderly, except for when we're actually just doing video game streams. Then I'm a fuck. Uh, all right, so we're, we're going to talk about something that happened really recently, honestly. Can't see you. Oh. I told you you should have moved about that, that somewhere else. There we go. I, I should be in... Yeah, I'm above camera Next now. time around, I say it's forbidden. What's forbidden? The ca- uh, computer sitting right there. Uh, but it looks nice and techy. You know, let's just move on. Nice and, and tacky. That, Am I right? Uh, that was funny. Yeah. Thank you, John. Show off. Yeah. Um, but recently, now everyone's heard the controversy with Destiny 1. It didn't promise anything. Like, it didn't keep any of its promises, whatnot, and so forth. Destiny 2 came out. And it did. It held up a lot more of what Destiny 1 was. It added shit. There's a story in there now. And plenty of that. What's really garbage with them is the first, like, DLC came out, right? It's very small. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what happened is if you haven't bought that DLC but you bought the game already, you've now lost content because they've pulled it from the game if you haven't bought the DLC. The final end of the game raid that you were able to do when you had the base game, you're not allowed to do anymore. There's a weapon that drops in it that you can't use anymore. And they've taken away a bunch of other missions and stuff that you can't access anymore because you haven't bought the DLC yet. Well, that's stupid. Yeah, it's that's extremely stupid. It's I, I've never no company has ever literally like here's an add-on. By the way, if you don't buy the add-on, we're taking away stuff, and I think it just sets a really bad possibility for future of like like even people hate DLC already. But this yeah, is... That's not true. I don't know if I agree with yeah. that. DLC is good in certain spots. Like, playing to win, yes, that's not okay. Well, I'm, I'm, if you're adding more content to the game... I, most people have gone sour on season passes and junk like that because they don't add enough or they're hiding stuff behind it. And now this one's taking away. I, right. know, I no, haven't I heard about any of this. Away. Yeah, I had neither, but it's probably because I don't give a crap about Destiny. Well, I'm just saying, it's not even giving a crap about Destiny, but imagine this, imagine, you know, Nintendo's only now getting into DLC, but imagine <laughs> imagine you can't beat Mario now. They just gave Link a, a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and Mario well, has a Vespa scooter. Yeah, yeah. well. But yeah, just, there you go. Like, you can no longer beat Mario because you haven't bought the DLC packs. Yeah, I get it. That's yeah, I mean, it's... It's shady. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. what about it's wrong. I just I, hadn't heard of it. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing where I've met a lot of Destiny players and I think they're going to keep at it regardless they're going to get pissed for two minutes and they'll keep playing the game it's the kind of stuff I see with games like this all the time I don't know I, I, I've talked with some people and I think we've come to the most common conclusion that Destiny is the most uh, the most hardcore game for casual gamers Overwatch? no Destiny it's a multiplayer game it has its own league right now even they, they put a lot into that game doesn't overwatch have a league too no that's what i'm saying overwatch does. oh i thought you're saying no, destiny no, no, did. No, no, no destiny 
Destiny doesn't have anything to it other than the main game. And hey, you didn't spend an extra thirty dollars. Now less of the main game. I need to be honest here. I completely tuned out the last like two minutes. That's fine. I just I was looking at our our back play or our replay here, mm. and I look so short. <laughs> Like, it looks like I have a huge head on a tiny body. Was, you do. I was expecting him to say, I look so good. I do. Sorry. All right, but, I, I mean, like, literally, mo- most of the reason I bring this up is because it's really kind of currently happening right now. Yeah. As I said, it's, I think it just sets a super bad example. And, like, I don't think there's any, the only fixing it is just giving back the players yeah, what Yeah, patch they the stuff back. And, I don't know. Because that, that's part of the podcast topic, too, is... What if it hadn't have happened, which means Destiny wouldn't be any different? And uh, how to fix it, which that's like the only fucking fix. But, I mean, if you have those fans who have left now because of that, which i sure there are some. Well, I, I think that's a hard thing to really talk about because we don't know what the real fallout is yet. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, we can say, well, what would have happened if they hadn't done that? Well, right. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen now yeah, that they know, did. Is it going to... Yeah, I mean, that that's yeah. a tough one. I, you know, and I, you, I mean, it's good we have some new gen stuff in here because I don't do any new gen. I don't know anything about it. Mm. Um, how do you work that tracks? I, I don't know how to do it at all. Um, I mean, that's tough. You know, we'll see what the fallout is in the next year or so, whether or not, you know, the fans actually leave the game. Or, you know, abandon the franchise, or do they just say, eh, and keep going? I think a lot of them are going to do that. That's the problem. That disappoints me. I, I've I seen know. a lot of people who play video games, just in general, that, yeah, I'm a bitch about it, but it's kind of where the buck stops. So it, no, it, it just, yeah. it's, and I mean, it is Activision, who is trash anyway. But I just, it, it's one of those scary things that as soon as one company gets away with it, you allow more companies to be able to get away with it. And just waiting for you have been that, shut down by Activision that, on though, screen. That almost seems like it was it wasn't intentional because that's just stupid. If it was, it was intentional. Like that that doesn't make any sense. Like there, there's literally one weapon in the game you can no longer use because it's only found in that raid. That so they, that doesn't make any sense unless they had the DLC ready beforehand. I bet they, almost guaranteed they did. And then they realized, oh, we released these weapons into the game that we were only going to have for the DLC. Oops. Yeah, well, and took them back. Yeah, you shouldn't punish people right, for sense, your fuck up. Just, yeah. yeah, but I mean, that that would make sense, I guess. Uh, you know, not from an actual... I, I, I think it might actually just be a pressure tactic to get more people to buy the DLC. Or it just re- fucks them over. People yeah. stop playing. Yeah, I yeah. Say, that's not that's mm-hmm. video game Darwinism. Yeah, but... You know. <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah, there, there's... There's no stopping it, it's just, I, I, I definitely felt like I needed to bring that up, because I was originally going to bring up all the loot boxes and shit. It, it does, well, yeah, but that's... the loot boxes. I mean, I don't know, that, that's a whole nother, like, I, I have to do more research into it, but I know how it ended up was, basically in Star Wars Battlefront 2, you were going to either spend hours upon hours upon hours... To unlock it, level everything so that you could play the characters like their full potential. Or Or you could buy loot boxes for chances just to have them unlocked right away. Well, see, that's... I I hate new generation gaming because you can buy a win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the games I play, the games I love, if you can't beat it, you can't beat it. I mean, there's, there's no cheat. You know, I and yeah, you can say in certain games, oh, there's ways to go back behind or back doors and stuff like that, but those are built into the game intentionally. You can't just pay and oh, all of a sudden I have everything. So you, you can't know. pay twenty dollars to get the Star Road. No, I you mean, get you, you have you, to know how to play. You get Reptile to show up and he kicks your ass. You start over. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's, wow, that was a nice reference. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's the one, it's like him and Akuma are the two I'm thinking of right now. Yeah, I mean, Akuma it, stays, I think. No, no, it 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 kicks your ass Sorry and. For no, you're good. You you have to. You had to be able to actually play the game, and if you couldn't beat something, you couldn't beat it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I I hate new gen games because you know if you're willing to drop money, hey, you're good. Yeah, and uh, if I remember correctly, the original like proposed time that it might take to 100 percent the game was something around 2,000 hours or something. It's crazy. 
It was a ridiculous number. Yeah, to, I don't to, think to, it's to a get single just, game. To just get to have everything for every class. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. But, you know, if you love the game, you'll play it. I mean... but I'm, I, 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 I've loved the games. I, I love TF2. Yeah, that's where I was about to go. You first. And uh, I had 500 hours on one class in that game. I never had a class that was nearly as popular, but it, I, there was never, you know, I don't know. I, I, I never still put 2,000 hours into that game. I played 700 hours of Scout, and then a grand total of, like, 60 hours on every other class. Total. Yeah. I probably got the most hours in Bioshock, just because of the multiple times I've played through it. Yeah. I got a lot of hours into Breath of the Wild, but, I mean, I've only got, like, 120, I think. But Bioshock, I've probably got the most hours in. Uh, I mean, I'd probably be Fallout 3 or Revenge. Yeah, I mean, it's... I literally would spend all day playing. I don't know why we're naming off what our longest <laughs> game is. I don't know how that came about. Uh, because, like, no matter how much... These are games we adore that we're not going to come close to breaching 2,000 hours in. Yeah, alright, I just looked it up on uh, what was the estimated time to unlock everything without ever having having spent a dime in Star Wars up to other than uh, when you bought it. 4,528 hours. Nope. So they're, they're definitely expecting people to get sick of trying and just paying for shit. Yeah. Well, I never would. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, never in a million unless, years. Unless I can pay to be Jar Jar. AJ is the only Jar Jar fan on this uh, panel right now. That is now. not true. Cause did you see that on this I panel? Shared, oh, on the panel, maybe. Yeah. The thing I shared on Facebook the other day where uh, it was Jay. Mace Windu and somebody else. Kylo like, Ren. Yeah, Kylo Rank Ren lower than Jar Jar, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. I'm that's, so you know what, though? That's not Mace Windu's fault. They did not do it. No, they didn't. Was, I mean, that was just like... Yeah. Completely different topic. What are we doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is how it works. Why would man. you bring up Jar Jar? You know that just makes my blood pressure. I actually hate that one's trigger. We did not know. I hate that. I love Jar Jar. It's Why so you... stupid. He's, He's so comic great. book guy. Jar Jar. Everybody hates you but me. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> I don't want to do right. this anymore. So, so, so basically, <laughs> DLC is getting worse. And yeah, uh, like, you know, little plastic figures by Nintendo that they're not distributing enough of. That's not really a problem. That, that's not the issue anymore for them. But it still is. Like, you know, people bitch about $5 DLCs. Here's Nintendo coming out with $12 DLCs. That's, uh, okay, I can agree on that. That, that the, don't really do much in most games. But uh, I will say this. You also, at one point, lose the ability to get that DLC. I haven't bought a DLC and, since Black Ops. Uh, with an Amiibo, you at least have a tiny little statue. Yeah. And those servers aren't going down. If you can find the yeah. Amiibo, you've got the Amiibo. Like uh, John's Mr. Rossetti right there. Did you see they're doing... Uh, I'm the sure cereal. you all saw the cereal yeah. is going to be Amiibo. Yes. It comes out uh, tomorrow. That's pretty funny. I kind of want the cereal, but I'm probably not going to be able to ever eat it. It doesn't do much, though. It only gives you some coins and some hearts and Odyssey. Still Amiibo. Yeah. It's so hard to get coins in that game and hearts. I know. All right. But, yeah. Fun. DLC, it's gotten worse, and it... Right now, it looks like it's going even more worse, and you're going to see... I, I think you're going to see a split in companies where it's the casual ones that throw out this DLC like all the time, and then you're not going to see... I think that's most AAA games right now. And oh, then you're yeah. going to see uh, kind of like AA games, or whatever you would want to call them. I've been hearing that term more AA games that are like, you know, $40 games. They definitely aren't nearly as long. But they have more to them if you're like an actual gamer. Yeah, well. uh, uh, would you call Mario Odyssey that then? Because you can get through the game in like eight actually. hours. I, I would. No, the, the current speed runs are down under two. I'm not talking speed runs. I'm just talking playing through the game at a normal yeah. pace. Well, yeah, but I mean, a, you can beat the game in a, you know. A but the option's there to have more. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm currently. God, I don't even know how many hours I got into it, but I'm at 911 moons. So oh. close, so close. But the last eighty I need, I, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like uh, they're in what said darker side and even darker side or something. Well, like I, I beat dark side and got all that. Darker side is one I just every time I warp there to mess with it, I just eh. my favorite DC. You villain. stop having fun. It's just, it isn't. You know, at that point, it's not fun. It's a grind. Yeah, 
Um, and I'm at that point in the game where I think I'm going to put it down and be done with it because I, I'm, I feel like I'm grinding now instead mm-hmm. of just having fun playing a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm just about done with Odyssey, um, which I think should have been in contention pretty easily for game of the year. But it, it, uh, uh, it was, Wild, yeah. yeah. Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, Wild deserved it, but I think Odyssey could have been right there with it. Uh, I, there are plenty of people who argue Breath of the, or argue which one was better this year. I, I, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm it's, not mad about either one if they won, but yeah. I know Breath of the Wild won, mm-hmm. uh, which I might go back because I accidentally deleted my 120-hour save file, so I might have to go back and beat that game again. Yeah. I don't know if I'll do the DLC. Hop on the motorcycle, man. I don't want the motorcycle, and the other one, what, they like, the, like you can well, tame yeah. dogs, I mean, mm-hmm. it, you know. Uh, the the new one that just came out is, like, more story stuff. It's about the Guardians. Yeah, yeah but the Master the master Quest or whatever, I never did that, and it just didn't look that interesting to me. So, I would say this, the only reason I'm really excited about maybe the DLC for Zelda is that that motorcycle can go up walls. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, and they show it like going up an incline, so that makes it kind of more interesting so to me. Turn, okay, uh, so. Zelda into trials. Yeah, yeah. So we just branched out that just now all DLC is shit, as opposed to what it originally started as. Uh, not all DLC. Is Most shit, DLC but is shit. A lot of DLC right now in AAA games is dog shit. I genuinely don't remember what his first time. Was. Uh, something with Destiny. Yeah, it started with Destiny, and then Batman. we got to Zelda. Uh, I was about Batman. Justice. Batman. Justice. 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 League. Good movie. <clears throat> Meh. Yeah. No. So you didn't see it. it. I don't have to see it. Shut up. It's got John Ben Affleck. Yeah. John yeah. Was in it. Don't you know? Me and Freddie. <laughs> Freddie Prince Jr. No, no, no. <laughs> it's Fred Savage. Sorry. Fred Savage. Me and Fred Savage. Speaking of, my topic. Yeah. Oh, all right. We're going Power Glove, baby. Oh. You want to go grab your Power Glove? No, nah, I'm not going to grab a Power Glove. I don't if people it. are listening to this, they probably know what a Power Glove is by now. <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, the Power Glove was released in 89 and discontinued in 90. Sounds right. Um, if that tells you anything. Now, you know, what we what we can say is the Power Glove, the marketing for it was absolutely ridiculous. It was so good. The execution was garbage. They sold over a million units in that one year. Why don't you Did just say it? Seriously? It's so bad. It's not. It's, it is. Yeah, don't uh, say no, it. no, the, the Power Glove is garbage. Uh, hey, don't get me wrong. It's a He's the one accessory. arguing that it's not garbage. You have one? Liking something? I got one at Tori. Remember? And you play with it. I do. You're a liar. I swear to God. Okay, liking something doesn't make it not now, shit. Uh, hold on, no. Hold on, no. Power Glove does work like it's supposed to if it is perfectly calibrated. It actually runs off of uh, micro or uh, supersonic sounds. Because those three sensors that go on your yeah. TV, those are actually receivers. And there's two microphones, not microphones, but speakers on your uh, Power Glove. That gives you the the awe or the pitch, whatever it is, uh, when you move it. Uh, the marketing campaign was it for, for was just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, there was a whole movie that was nothing but a Nintendo advertisement. Yeah, if you haven't seen The Wizard, it's about John's life. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was loosely based on my life. Uh, me and Freddie sat down one day and we decided to make a movie about it. Um, but that's another story. We'll do another podcast all about me and Freddie. We'll, we'll do a podcast on The Wizard eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, no, what we should do is we should like. Play it and then do commentary over it. That's, oh, like Mr. Science Theater. Yeah, 2000? I'm down for that. That'd be funny. Um, but I mean, it sold over a million units. It's just that once if people it had it, they knew it was garbage. They once people had it, they hated it. I mean, they absolutely hated it. Uh, there was a line of games that was supposed to be released with it. Two only two of them came out, and that was um, Super Glove Super Ball. Ball and Bad Street Brawler. Um, and there was actually two more slated to come out. I can't remember the names of them. Uh, but they never got released because it was such a piece of crap. Um, now, that technology for that was actually stolen from something else. Uh, what was the name of it? And Nintendo is a bit famous for it. Yeah, I mean, it got stolen from... Um, I wrote it down because I knew I wasn't going to remember. Yeah, that'll help. Thank you. Uh, it's called a data glove, mm-hmm. um, which actually works really well. It was a $250,000 piece of equipment. Fiber optics inside of it. Yeah. Of whatever the hell that is. Yeah, yeah. and they, they dumbed it down so they could make it for $24 and sell it. I think retail was 75 bucks for this thing, right? Um, In 1989, 75 bucks is a lot more than 2017. Uh, I know, but you gotta, I mean, they sold a million units in mm-hmm. a year, and it was less than a year that was actually on the shelves. So the marketing wasn't the problem. It was the execution. Now, what, what I will say Nintendo did, and they, they do this all the time, they're pioneers. 
they that was the first step to VR, the first step to motion tracking. Mm -hmm. The Power Glove was. It wasn't done right because the technology wasn't there where they could actually afford to make it so people could buy it. Yeah, but Not they make tried. it good. No, and and they yeah. did that uh, tons of times. I mean, the U Force is another one. That was Konami, uh, though, not Nintendo. That was Nintendo. Yeah, well, Nintendo didn't make the Power Glove. That's true. That was, what, Bandai? Yeah, I think so. They just licensed it, mm -hmm. Nintendo. But, you know, all these accessories that were coming out for the Nintendo, most of them did not work as you wanted them to. They knew what they wanted them to do, but they couldn't quite make it do it. They released it anyways, telling people that it was going to do something awesome, and it didn't. Um, you know, the U-Force is a good example. So is that yes. stupid rollerball thing they had. Uh, the Rollin' Rocker. Yeah, Rollin' Rocker. Um, <clears throat> there's a ton of them. I mean, they had one of the first wireless controllers, too. Acclaim made it. Yeah, you have those. Yeah. No, the Atari 2600 had one first. Well, yeah, but they... But one of the first popularized Yeah. Ones. Um, and the Acclaim one was terrible. But, I mean, I mean, as far as... I still never got that to work. Oh, really? Yeah. That bad, huh? Yeah. I mean, is the, is the Power Glove a terrible accessory? Yes, and that's why I'm talking about it. But Nintendo did everything right except for the actual product. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know what else I have to say about that. <laughs> well, I mean, we were talking about, like, what what could have happened if it would have been, you know, like, where where could it have gone, I guess? Well, it, it I, games, it's compatible. It may not have, like, more specific games, but it's compatible with, I think, every game in the library. Yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, it had more games made towards the technology. Mm -hmm. Well, but the technology useful. was failed. I, I mean, it was, it was flawed. I won't say it's failed. It's a flawed technology, the way they did it. And, you know, they had more games slated, but they saw the writing on the wall, and they pulled it. Um, in Japan, there wasn't even uh, any games released specifically for the Power Glove. It was literally just an extra accessory you could buy. Um, like an NES Max or something. So, well, the true story, uh, Super Glove Bowl, uh, we had that at my aunt's without a power glove. <laughs> How much fun was that? Oh, man, I tried to play it all the time because the cover art's great. Probably about as much as fun as playing it with the power glove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but yeah, no, it was it was a terrible travesty. I, I like, can't I defend just, the power glove with you. I no. just can't do it. No, it's I'm not. You know, I I get where he's coming from. It's cool to have, and yeah, you can play certain games with it. I mean, it does have the D pad and the A B. You can actually just sit there and play regularly. Mm -hmm. It's it, and if you have it positioned perfectly, yeah, it kind of works. Beat Tyson with it. And I believe it works. Someone said that they beat Tyson the other day with. I, I want to see it. I don't want to hear a story. I don't he buy that joking. shit. Um, I, you know, another thing we can also kind of touch on is the mysterious left-handed power glove. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Listen, I know. Uh, I know it doesn't. But somebody that I know and trust, <laughs> and isn't one to make crap up for no reason. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know Mike. Gug? Video game underground? Oh, him? Uh, Mike, okay. Yeah. He's not one to just make crap up. No, he's not. He remembers going into Toys R Us and seeing a left-handed power glove because he was left-handed. And huh. he thought about buying it. But you look anywhere on the internet, and this is the only reported case that I, I've ever heard of where someone says, oh yeah, I know it was there. You know, you look up anything, there is no record of it whatsoever. I mean, keep in mind though, 30, 40 years ago, you remember things differently. I don't know, man. I, I trust Mike. I do, too. That's the thing. But we know Mike. <laughs> I mean, I, I trust Mike. Uh, you know, he talks about the left-handed power glove, and he remembers it specifically. He should have bought the damn thing and, like, put it on display and be like, it exists. If he'd have the only one. Yeah. I, I mean, the, it's ridiculous. They, they put it out in Toys R Us for 32 minutes. Mike was the only one who ever saw it. And then he left it. But, I mean, know. it could have been that they were there. Nobody bought them because, you know, left hand. it's like, what, 6% of the population? Got pulled back. I mean, this isn't going to wind the, up being no, like stadium events where someone no. bought a couple. I, I, I still say they're, they're, if it's set out for at least, what, we'll give it a week, one would have been purchased. See, I, been seen online. I don't think it's real. I don't either. I don't think it's real, but Mike saying that he remembers it gives that glimmer of, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like that. Because Mike's that not one to just BS, you know? 
Yeah. Um, I have never met anybody who knows more about his stuff than him. Uh, Mike, Mike is. We actually we, we talked about bringing him on the podcast. I, I I'm get, down. I want to get Mike on the podcast because Mike is very knowledgeable on so much. He has been in the game for so long. I mean, he is a staple in Northern Ohio as far as video games. He really and people is. People love his theme song in <laughs> Texas. <laughs> yeah, I, we uh, we're part of a Facebook group for video game business owners, and we added Mike into it. And um, as soon as he gets added, people started calling him out and saying, hey, I know your song. I've heard your song. I love your theme song. And it's like the most monotone thing, but it's really Oh, from catchy. his really old commercials yes. with, the, with the dancing okay. robots? Yeah. Yes. That is seriously the only reason I found his store. We were hanging out in Toledo. We used to go to another store all the time. He says, don't say other stores in his shop, so I won't. Oh, where'd you go? I'm, I'm not allowed to say. I don't So I I know. It, was, it, was just re- it was replays back when it was really good. Not trying defamation of your store but oh on alexis yeah, yeah yeah that was the good one man back in the day but like we were up there and i was like the commercials used to play on upn i watched smackdown every week and saw them and i was like oh you were right see next the... to him on alexis yeah man. i know i was like That's let's... Was last year yeah still. that was i was like let's see if the place still exists and it does I used to go into that store. We're off topic, but I used to go That's in there. That's fine. You know, when we started collecting, and we got to know Mike really well. Actually, I helped move him into his new space um, over on McCord. Um, if anyone's looking for a good game store to go to, Central McCord Video Game Underground, um, mm-hmm. up in Toledo, um, in the St. James Plaza, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, really good store, really good owner. He's very knowledgeable. If you have a question about anything, he is going to know the answer. Um, the only thing I'm going to say... To maybe be bad. Mike does not remember names, like at all. He knows me. He, he knows you know your... enough people. It's hard to remember that many yeah. people. But I, I say we move on because I'm expected to get home around six thirty ish. So <laughs> you, Rather he's you. told her six thirty. Six thirty seven. No, you said six six thirty last night. No, I said six thirty seven. Okay. The only other thing I'll say about the power glove Brian is while it. Said we were going to leave at eleven thirty. That was my fault more than anybody's. I'm just saying. Go on. I was going to say, while it, while it was a failed accessory just in terms of usability, um, what it did do, Nintendo actually never gave up on the technology for motion. Mm-hmm. And they're the only ones that have actually done it well. And everyone hates on the Wii, but they did the Wii well. I don't. You hate on the Wii more than anyone. You know, yeah. what, you know what? You can't hate on a system that outsold anything else ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. It okay. just doesn't... The we you know, you can talk about marketing towards children and all that other crap doesn't matter. People. But they they perfected it and I won't well, maybe not perfected, but name another company that has done it as well as Nintendo has. The Connect, a monstrous failure. Uh Samba de Amigo, Sega, come on. Oh, God, I hate you. And uh, <laughs> that's it for the power glove. AJ, what you got, girl? I resemble that. You resemble that. Go on. Mm. Uh, so my one is uh, over here. What? That's just just to your topic. My one, because I'm a slacker, is uh, another Nintendo one. I almost did this. <laughs> yeah, me and John were kind of fighting over who was going to get it. But... He's got the best one of yeah, us, so yeah. I don't have one, but you know. Well, so mine is another failed Nintendo product, but this one's actually a system, and it is not the Wii U. Um, oh, you did fail. Go ahead. The Wii U kind of Wii fail. Is a fail. Wii U was a warm up for the Switch. Go ahead. Which means it but was a, a failure. Fail. Yes, yeah, so the Nintendo 32X. We went over this today. Go yeah. on. <laughs> uh, so mine is the uh, VR32, as it was codenamed before it came out. Oh, the 3DS. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's so that failure, failure that failure sold Nintendo like what 12 test. units. Yeah. Yeah. No, so mine is the uh, Virtual Boy. <laughs> uh, it was designed by Gunpei Yokoi, who a lot of Nintendo fanboys know is. The creator of the Game & Watch and the Game Boy. And Metroid. And Metroid. If I'm not correct, though, he knew it wasn't ready to go to market. It, yes. He knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He totally knew. He, yeah. But Nintendo wanted to rush it out because... They're Nintendo. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so, but the bad thing about this is that the failure of the Virtual Boy is what led to Gunpei Yokoi leaving Nintendo after 31 years. And he went to go do his own thing, and then he died. So. Yeah. I feel that could have happened regardless. I wouldn't call well, that a yeah, direct uh, correlation I mean, with his he death. He did die in a very tragic so way. I think he was hit by a car. car he, he, uh, yeah, it was a car wreck. I don't think he was hit. No, no, he was. It was like on a bike. Or oh or shit! Yeah, I did not yeah. know that. I thought he was in another car. No, no. Nah, he he was street meat. So wow. So in 1992, they bought the rights to the technology for five million dollars. They invested into this. 
much. Yeah. Once again, 1992, five million dollars is a lot more money. Right. Yeah. Ouch. But, um, Especially so, for a technology that makes you go blind. Yeah. But um, yeah, so five million dollars to buy that tech. What's funny about the technology behind it is that Sega had already rejected it. <laughs> Wait, Sega, <laughs> this is shit. Yeah. Can I do a slight offshoot? And I guess this could have been one of my topics. Ooh. Nintendo turned down Hue cards. Hue cards. That yeah. became the Turbo Graphics yeah. 16. Oh, so go yeah, on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but commercially the Turbo wasn't very successful in America. Yeah. But we're talking about we're talking about Turbo, NTSC. not PC. Yeah. Like, go ahead though. But, I keep getting interrupted by these guys. I want to listen. It's it is. is. Um. But yeah, so... Give me that knife for the quick... This guy. Go on. Um, oh, yeah, because $5 million, Sega turned it down because they didn't think that it was going to work as a home console. Surprise, it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Does anybody know why they picked the monochrome red? Uh, because the other option, I believe, was green. Yeah, but there was a specific reason of why they actually... No, no, I know the same I do, too. I do not. Oh, crap. It was, um... Man, Sega making a good choice. That's a yeah, That's what I was about to say. It's like, in the mid-90s, like, Sega knowing this was a bad idea, wow, that's like some... It needs to be so that, That's like the foresight of a god okay. there for one so minute. So they picked red because the high speed of the monochrome red eliminated the blur. Oh, oh. that's it. It made it more visible, yeah. it yeah. made it more visible. Like, it looks bad, like... Yeah, it does. ...when you're using it, because I think all of us have one except you, right? I don't have one, but I've used one. Yeah. My, uh... If you, if you play that thing more than like 20 minutes, it's... It, it advises you not to on the yeah, box. Right. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like in the first page of the manual, it had all these health warnings. And it's like... It's, it, I, you know, I've played... I've had a couple come through the store. I've owned a few. Um, 10 minutes migraine. Yeah. Oh, yeah you know what else is great? When you really think about it, it kind of started the most annoying Nintendo trend of all time. You've been playing for an awful long time. You should take a break. Yeah. It's, at essence, that's where that started. So, yeah. I, I got how long was that on the market? It was it, okay. So it was shown first off in November '94 at Trade Zone Japan, uh, but it was being rushed, like we were talking about earlier about Gunpei Yokoi. It was rushed to uh, compete with the Sega Saturn coming out soon. Yeah, which uh, got a we'll tie-in going here. here. Uh, well, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Uh, but yeah, so it released in July of '95. And it was a hundred. Oh, well, that's in Japan. And it was one hundred and seventy nine dollars and ninety five cents. In ninety five, that is a lot of money. But yeah, especially uh, when, when the Game Boy handheld. launched it at a hundred. Yeah. Not a handheld, but a portable, and that is the least portable portable I've ever seen. And that includes the Game Gear and the Lynx. Right. Well, the Game Gear's not that. The Game Gear is It's bulky that. as hell, dude. <laughs> I'm talking size. So, so why do you take him as more credible than me all the time? Your li- your stream's lagging. Yeah. Not, not Are you play. watching us again? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so it came oh, yeah, out. We're, we're just randomly getting choked. It came out in America in August. Like it's it's recording fine, but it the internet here is getting choked. Nintendo like, spent twenty million dollars to promote it before it released. And it was only on the market for less than a year before they deemed it a failure and was like this. Just and it was like work. fifty bucks at Toys R Us. Yeah, it got discontinued and then clearanced out everywhere. There were there were. Um, urban myths or legends I guess when it was out that would actually uh, give you brain cancer really yeah huh yeah. I've yeah, never that, heard those but I'm not surprised because, it's an urban legend well I mean the headaches people used to get yeah. they thought they were getting cancer um, from that that alone and that thing um, it's a cool shelf piece now oh yeah, yeah. that's all mine is uh, I mean I play I've, it's the easiest library to collect for in North America 22 games it gets expensive. I know, like only one is super expensive though, and that's Jack Brothers. Yeah, Jack Brothers. Though. There's one more that's up there. Waterworld's kind of expensive. Is it bowling up there? Uh, Nestor's uh, funky, yeah, yeah. funky Bowling is, yeah. Funky Bowling, because that was actually I used to have that one. That yeah. game was when bowling I had when I had the Virtual Boys a kid. I had that Mario Tennis because it was back in. Uh, Everyone had Mario Tennis. Yeah. I've got a copy of Mario Tennis. But yeah, but I mean, it, it got a price drop after one month. It was discontinued in March, which is only. 
like seven months later. Yep. So that's Nintendo's GameCom, if you will. They sold eight hundred thousand. They didn't even break a million. They at least sold a million Power Gloves. Yeah. But they couldn't even sell a million Virtual Boys, which is why they're kind of hard to find now. And they sell for some good money now. Yeah, they do. Most depressing story I've ever heard about one was at another game store. Guy said someone brought one in, complete in box, set it on the counter, went outside of the box, ripped it up and threw it in the garbage and said, what do you give me for this? Not even kidding. I don't want to talk to you. I know it wasn't you, but you probably Well, well, I mean, yeah, I I wouldn't do that. To be fair, can we believe that story that was from a uh, certain... A shit store? Yeah, it was from buybacks. Oh. Oh, great. We're not going to be allowed to talk about them either. Thanks, Brian. Buybacks. They, they, they closed down. They're not in Toledo anymore. Really? Yeah, they're gone. Oh, yeah, they're, they're gone. gone. Yeah, they, they've they been closed. gone. Because I went there trying to buy their inventory, and they shipped it off to another store. Yeah, oh, that's some bull. They, and they, they posted something a few months ago, like, if we're not making profit on this store, then we're closing it. So they closed a bunch of stores. I was, Killer threat. I was a huge collector in this area for years before I opened a store. Yeah, you were. I have only been into there twice. And I used to make the rounds to every store once, twice a week. I've been in there twice. We used to go to the one Columbus a lot. Because it was just one source that had stuff. Yeah. And then, last time I went in, it was because they had a copy of The Little Mermaid for the NES for like $85. You're kidding me right And now. I walked out and I never went back. Usually my measuring stick, up until recently when the game has been hovering at 30 fucking dollars, used to be, if I walk into your store, I'm going to judge you based upon what you have Mario 3 for. This was at a time when Mario 3 was going for 7 still, and I saw it for 30, and I'm like, gone. Yeah, I got it for 25. 25, I was yeah. going to say, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, that's a whole other conversation about rarity and wanted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, still, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's supply and demand. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, everybody, we're not doing this topic. No, we'll yeah, do no. this topic another that's time. That's one of the topics I want Mike for around. I think oh, my Mike God. Mike would be a good one. If, yeah. if I can with him, he told me, like, he remembers selling Hagane for eleven dollars. See, but that's the problem. Mike only remembers the bad deals he, uh, yeah, he's like done. He said, talks about how he sold his whole turbo graphics collection. Yeah, he yeah. he remembers everything he did. But the thing is, when Mike sold it for that much, it was worth that much. Exactly. And he thinks, what if I had sat on it till now? Well, it could still be worth eleven bucks. It wouldn't have done you any good. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. And uh, I mean, he's got a million stories like that. He really does. Um, well, you've been in the game as long as he has. Uh, he. He was in he was in business during the council wars. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was. Um, well, that's kind of awesome. And, and as much as Mike probably sounds like this decrepit old man, Mike doesn't look terribly no. old. He's in his fifty. He might be fifty forties. Yeah, he's, like, so, he he's just peppers. been around. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a he good dude. Peppers. Yeah, he grows, he grows peppers. peppers. That's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Virtual Boy, absolute failure in every aspect, including marketing, in my yes. opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and no, that's we're something we're really they should have definitely. It should have been worked on a lot yeah, longer. They it well, it that. was just supposed to be a hold off till the sixty four came out too. So right, but I mean, they still pushed it out early to compete with. Was well, that supposed to explain why the sixty four is also trash? It's not. I don't uh, care. That's it's another not. conversation. We can get into that another time. You don't want me getting into that. Yeah. Um, okay, so you've got another topic. Yeah. So I want to do I his do. last because it's the let, best one. It's going to be a long one. All right. So my other other topic's not very good. It's about Daikatana. Have you ever heard of Daikatana? Thank I, God we had two, three weeks to pick these. I have and been that's what super you picked. busy. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's like um, he, he just looked around my store and said, what can I use? What no. sucks? That sucks. That's no. <laughs> but um, so I, I, I've talked about how I love Doom. And uh, your or John Romero. Hey, do you need a copy of uh, the 32 X? No, yeah, get a few. No, uh, John right, Romero is like one right. of one, one of the uh, top guys who worked on Doom, and you know, came about like you know what? Fuck this place! I'm gonna go make my own game with blackjack and hookers. And uh, he started talking up this game just for so years. Long. That is Die Katana. He's like, it's going to have. Super advanced enemies that like know what you're doing. We're going to have uh, all these different, <laughs> all, all, all these different um, weapons and shit, and it's going to have like the best level layout, and the killers. It, it's going to be what everyone said Duke Nukem Forever was going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, guess what? He even started spending like a shit ton of money on an ad campaign that says. 
John Romero is going to make you his bitch. And this is this is like early in sixty four. Mm-hmm. So they're like you're opening up like the early issues game informer and Nintendo Power. There's this just red page and there's like black blood. John Romero's gonna make you his bitch. And if you've ever touched that game, about five seconds in, you're gonna get lost. <laughs> because it's literally This is a game for a stream at some point. Taikatana uh no. Throw thirty minutes of your life away. So here's the qu- what's the failure of the game? It's just a bad game, executed it, it's, poorly. You said John sales. Romero made. You said John Romero made it. Yeah, that's why. Look at the pedigree behind. It. This is the guy that made Doom. Yeah, yeah uh, is, I mean that's my. What, what's the failure here? Is the, it the, the fact sales? That the, the, was the it sales were in the shit? Terrible game is. It's a bad game. The terrible sales, <coughs> and it basically shit canned his career. It would be like if you heard that, like, Miyamoto was the one behind the CDI Mario and Zelda games. Yeah. That's kind of... You watch your mouth. When you, when you, when you, when you talk about... <laughs> when, you, when you talk about the earliest American developers that meant something to the industry, he was kind of like a rock star. And to just go from Doom, and I think he worked on Doom 2, to Daikatana, which... Quake as well. I don't know if he did Quake. Uh, but he, he just... It's amazing how quickly someone can spin out of control because of their own popularity into a shithole. Yeah. For, I believe the biggest issue that people have said I'm talking about was he did what Sega did with Sonic 06. And all the testing groups, they're wrong. <laughs> and threw the shit yeah, That's out. a Sega move. <laughs> yeah, that's a Sega move. Oh, Sega. I, I can't say I've ever played it. It's, it's 64 and... Oh, I had, but that's because of John Tron. That's the only reason I'd heard of it. Oh, is there John Tron? That was like his first yeah. John Tron video. Yeah, it's really old. I, I, I've heard of it. I've never played it because it's... Well, I'm gonna well and watch the John Tron. I think we can move on to the last topic yeah. then. I, uh, I always seem to pick the topics that are just kind of like, oh, I think this will work. No, no you're good for bringing something modern into it, though, because... Yeah. I, I, I have no knowledge on modern mm-hmm. whatsoever. Um... And I'm okay with that. But I, that's not even modern, really. Well, but, well, no, that's not. But you know, the stuff with Destiny too. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I. I'm bad at. I'm bad at. Uh, <laughs> I'm bad at picks. Destiny's child. Daikatana, uh, yeah, was say. not a. Uh, the other two nobody left talks eye, about. It, it, left it is, eye. Uh, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I think <laughs> she, Queen Latifah was in there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Missy Elliott, I I'll think. I'll take your man. Yeah. Um... <sighs> All right, my last topic, <laughs> and this might be a doozy. Yeah, um, we, we knew this one was going to be And this is strictly... We probably should have separated Austin and John for this one. This is strictly in Hold relation back to the U.S. release. We're not talking about Japan. We're not talking about... It's U.S. release, and that is of the Sega Saturn. And how it basically tanked Sega. Mm. I mean... It's part... It, it is part of it. It's it's a you hold big, the two cents in, sir. Well, it's a big part of it. Now here, John. I, John has no I, first. I took some notes here. I, I wrote down some dates. Okay, um, the original release date for the Sega Saturn was supposed to be in. They called it Saturn Day. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a Saturday. Sonic Two launch on Sonic Tuesday. Yeah, so stupid. <laughs> uh, was September of ninety five. Um, they were doing that so they could have a lot of launch titles. They could have some good stuff out there. I think uh, what was the main one. Um, Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter, yeah. They wanted to have out for it. Um, and it was going to coincide, actually, with Sony's release of the PlayStation. Because mm-hmm. uh, Sony was dropping theirs in September as well. Early September, both of these were supposed to happen. Um, and it wasn't ready. And what happened was, I, I wrote his name down because I forgot. I knew I would forget it. Um, where did I put it? Tom Kleinden was the CEO of Sega at the time. Uh, Kalinsky. Kalinsky? Yeah, I can't even read my it's handwriting. Tom Kalinsky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Tom Kalinsky. I can't even read my hand- handwriting. He was also a genius, but this was stupid. He was the CEO. Well, he did a lot of stuff other than Sega. Yeah. Well, he was uh, Sega America. Yeah, yeah he was that's, the CEO well, That's of where the America. problem was with the North American yeah. launch. Um, and at <laughs> Sega's E3 in 95. One of my favorite And this was in ever. May of 95. Wow. Um, and, and there's a lot of speculation as to why he did this, but most people generally agree that it was because he was scared of what Sony was doing. Um, because see, I had heard. Hold, the, hold on, just sorry. just let him. Because uh, this, I mean, everybody knows uh, that Nintendo boned PlayStation. 
Mm. Or no, Bone, uh, you know. Sony. Uh, Sony. It's sweet, sweet Okay, babies. well, what a lot of Phillips people... was a better investment. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that Sony also went to Sega. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Sega told them a lot of stuff, but they ended up not merging or anything like that. Um, and Tom, I can't say his last Kalinsky. name. Kalinsky. Kalinsky got up on stage at E3 and out of nowhere and he didn't tell anyone he didn't tell the 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 game developers he didn't tell anyone else major retailers the major retailers had no clue he said available today at select at retailers. Se but here's the thing they didn't have enough units to ship out to everyone mm -hmm. okay so kb toys didn't get any and kb toys from that point on wouldn't carry anything saturn even when they were available Life so they got shipped it. out to electronics boutique they got shipped out to toys r us and a couple other ones Okay, um, they only had 30,000 units. Oh my god. At that time to ship. Okay, oh so, <laughs> and here's the thing. If they had waited until September, they had a $50 million ad campaign that they were going to build up the Saturn for its release. They were going to go crazy with it. They were going to get it out there. And he just dropped it in the middle of May for no reason other than he was scared what they were going to do. Now, what's funny is Sony, because they, they released their price mm -hmm. point at, what, $499 or $399? The exact same as okay, the Saturn. Okay, yeah, $399, which was high. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is $95. $399 for a brand new system. Sony got on stage three hours later and said, well, ours is $299. Oh, yeah, he, he, he walks that. up, has his packet, gets it ready like he's got... $299. And then he walks away. He might as well just drop, drop the, the fucking the mic. Video. Okay. And uh, people were actually thinking that that was going to push Sony into dropping early, and they didn't, which was very smart of them, yeah. because the titles they dropped at release. Well, that's uh, why destroyed. if they would have just launched at their regular window, mm -hmm. the brand loyalty to Sega with their launch titles, with some third-party <clears throat> launch titles. Well, the problem was that most of these game developers, the games weren't ready because they mm -hmm. were told a September well, drop date. It also doesn't help the Saturn was shit to program for. Well, I mean that's another, that's a whole other thing, but I mean uh, it. it they came out way too early. They had no advertising just one day. Oh, look, Saturn's in stores. And I, yeah. I was talking to my buddy Tim because Tim, Tim remembers. Loves the Saturn. Tim remembers. I do too. Okay. He remembers walking into Toys R Us and going to the video game section like he always does. And there's this console called the Saturn. And he had never heard of it. He goes, What is this? Because he read all the magazines back then when he was a kid. He did all that crap. He'd never heard of it. He didn't know what it was. And then he sees it's $400. Um, and the. the other problem with the Saturn, other than that, and I can't remember what I was going to say, so someone else talk. Okay. Uh, well, do you want to talk about the 32X? Oh, you hear about the 32X? No, okay, here's what else I was going to say. And the other problem with the Saturn was that people didn't know the system, and they didn't, a lot of fans of Sega weren't trusting Sega anymore because of crap like the 32X and all these horrible add-ons they threw onto the Genesis. Okay, and the other thing that they were doing is they were really pushing hard at the 32X, which kind of took away from sales of the Saturn. That was North America's problem, because the Genesis was still doing really good in North America, and Sega Japan's like, we want to launch this. Nah, fuck that. Sega was winning. The Genesis is doing great. We don't want to do that. Sega was winning console wars. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that right now. They really were. Uh, in units sold and everything else, they were winning. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then, the, with the Saturn drop, um, they destroyed themselves, because Sony dropped in September. Okay, and I've got the numbers on what they sold. Oh, I'm sure they're shit, too. Okay, um, let's see. PS1 launched September 9th. Uh, Saturn had only sold 80,000 units at that point. I think I remember this number. Okay. Sony, in pre-orders alone, had 100,000. That's disgusting. By May of 96, Saturn had sold 600,000 consoles. Sony was at 1.2 million, and they released six months after mm. the Saturn did. And then the following year, Nintendo would release the most technically inferior of the console of the generation and still fucking do well. Oh, hell yeah, they did. Are you kidding me? And that's when Nintendo won. I don't care what anyone says. Nintendo won. Because it wasn't a battle anymore. So the only battle they had was Sony. Um, Genesis, or uh, Sega, I should say, shot themselves in the foot. Well, so did Nintendo. They created the biggest competition. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... That's kind of why we're steering away from that merger because that's a long conversation. Oh, it is about yeah. what ha what happened, what did happen. Um, I mean, I mean, it's just I'm trying to think what else to say here other than how stupid could you be? Well, uh, I think if I remember correctly, part of the reason that they launched the the Sega Saturn early and they showed it off at E3 and everything in America, the first E3, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah, the first. It was the first. Um, I think it was a call by Sega of Japan. No. It wasn't? No. No. It was Sega of America. They panicked 
and said, we have to get the install base six months before they do. Now, I, he did. I was thinking he was like, this is a bad idea. I, I well, now, here's the thing, though. The guy, his what's the name was Tom, whatever his name was. Kalinsky. Kalinsky, thank you. He was having a lot of pressure from Japan, mm-hmm. okay, and eventually he did resign because of that because he was sick of being their marionette. Yeah. But there's nothing to support to say that, oh, they told him to do that. That was on him. Mm. Nobody knew. They also despise him because I believe Kalinsky was the guy who said, we're going to package the Genesis in North America with Sonic the Hedgehog. The fuck you are! We're doing it! And they did, and it's what propelled him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It was just one of the most boneheaded public things you've ever seen done. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if they well, hadn't done that, what would have happened? Would Sony have still crushed them? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it would have been more even. Okay. I don't well, think they'd they have that, the that Xbox. $100 difference. Well, and they were supposed to have a Virtual thing. Fighter uh, edition of the Saturn that was like 500 and something dollars. It'd be pretty cool, though. Yeah. Um, but uh, A little known fact, there was actually a company that bought the rights to the Saturn that I can't remember what it was called now, but they were going to release the Saturn for like 50, 60 bucks. Damn. Nice. At, towards the end of the run. Yeah. But it never happened. Kind of like Jaleco did with the Model 3 Genesis. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, it was supposed to happen. I can't remember the name of the console, what they were going to name it, but it never actually happened. So, um, can we talk about what else the North American Sega Saturn was missing? Sega Tassanshiro. Yeah. The greatest mascot that ever existed. He's up there for me, man. For 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 a television campaign, Sagata Sancho is pretty good. Yeah, I just uh, it it to this day it baffles me, <clears throat> and I hate Sega. I, I love Sega. And I, I hate, hate their decisions. Sega with a passion. I hate every console they've ever put out, but they could have won. They could have actually still been a major player. And like they're it. a major player in different areas now. Obviously, they're not in the the console market. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't even really care about software anymore. They're not pushing Sonic the Hedgehog and Yakuza. They don't push jack shit anymore. Well, they're in arcades, man. Oh, yeah, yeah I know, but th- they, that, they, that's they, more they, Japan. Still... It's not a big over here, really. Yeah, they're huge in Japan, though. Yeah. Sega's so fan base in Japan is still amazing. Are you that bored? It was um, that bored with what we're doing. Man, I, I think Sega Saturn launched with three games. Daytona USA. Best one. <laughs> Game over, yeah. But that got destroyed by... uh by... Ridge Racer, Ridge yeah, Racer. it was. Ridge, and, and, that was the and launch. It was weird, and it's funny because they everyone looks at Ridge Racer, and then they look at um, Daytona, and they think to themselves, "Oh well, the Saturn can't handle 3D as well as the PlayStation." Yeah, which technically it's not really true. No. Well, um, well it, it is meant to be a uh, 2D a two, powerhouse. Yeah, 2D well, powerhouse. because that's why it was so hard to program for because they had already really they were done with it. And it's like, have you seen what the PlayStation's going to be able to do with 3D? And they're like, shit, how do we do this? Throw an extra processor in it. That's a good idea. That doesn't make... Just throw another processor. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And that's how they did it. And that's why no one knew how to program the damn thing. I mean, and they just... Uh, that one misstep, and it's a giant one, launched Sony. I mean, because, uh, <laughs> one, the price point, two, the... Uh, the campaign, or the, the marketing campaign that they put out for Sony was just phenomenal. Um... And you can't expect to just put something in a store with no advertising and think it's going to sell. Oh, no. Especially not on the Sega name after all the horrible debacles with the Genesis. If it tells you anything, it was such a shit show. That's why they wanted Dreamcast to be its own brand without the Sega name attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The best thing they ever did was that fishing controller. The Dreamcast? Yeah. Debatable, but okay. We need to do a Sega bass fishing stream. I don't, I, I don't think I can. You can. I physically will get ill. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, we're streaming uh, Sega. But we okay. So Daytona USA, amazing game. Virtual Fighter Two. Yep. And I, I know. I think I know the other one. Is uh, Clockwork Knight. No, Clockwork was very close. He's in the launch window. Okay. Which that was the reason I wanted to play a Saturn when I was a kid was Clockwork Knight. I love that game. Well, that's the thing. There were there were less than ten games for the first three months I, I, so I of the system. There were less than ten games. I think it was three at launch. There were three at launch for the Super Nintendo, but they were really high quality. Yeah. Yeah, but they they did that launch right. And I think it was four. F Zero, Pilot Wings, Super Mario World. What was the fourth one? Or was it just those three? Number, but I, I mean that's also a different. And now that, that's also a different time of yeah, launch was. experience because now if you don't ship a, a you know a game platform without ten games at least, you're a maniac. The PlayStation Two launched with like I don't twelve. Know. They just most of them sucked. Look at what the Switch did. He's not wrong. Yeah, one two Switch. 
Breath of the Wild. Arms. Well, Arms, no, was, arms was in the launch act, window, yeah. but it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Look at it. I mean, Just Dance. Yeah. And I think that was it. Yeah. It was I, four or five titles. And they, they leaned so heavily on Breath of the Wild. Oh, how well it they out. did. And it wasn't even an exclusive. No. Uh, so your three Sega Saturn launch titles are Daytona, Virtual Fighter, and Panzer Dragoon. Oh, duh. You think I'd know that? Yeah. Yeah, you should have known that, actually. Why don't you know, know that? that. Dumb idiot. I ain't selling the shit for I'm a not a Sega guy. Well, you're People come in here to ask me about Sega, I'm like, you came to the wrong place. You came to the wrong do, neighborhood. Do you, do you see the link? Do you see the Spider-Man? Do you see the Sonic? <laughs> I mean, I do. <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's a cool Sonic, though. I meant the one that's painted. That's not painted. Sonic. That one's from Sonic Advance oh, yeah, 2 or that's 3. That's the Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's Sonic Advance 2 or 3. We're talking about my, my, oh. my... Yeah, he has a stand-up from Sonic Adventure 2. That's two. Yeah. That's, uh... That's two actually a pretty vibe. Who's on the stream? Who are we talking to? Uh, network. It, it, network. Welcome back, Network. Yeah. I, I was just trying not to interrupt the podcast by like, Hey, what's up, man? No. Well, too late now. He yeah. just stood up. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, um... In, in a brief synopsis... We, we did briefly talk about those, by the way. Saturn, um, absolutely destroyed Sega. Uh, I mean, it was a major contributor to the downfall of an empire. I mean, it was not the initial blow, but it was the killer. Um, you know, the initial was with the 32X and uh, just that horrible crap. I don't even agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree that Sat like the end of the Saturn was the final nail of the coffin when after only two years they said, Sega Saturn is not our future. As though any brand loyalty you had hadn't already left you. That was it. Well, the brand loyalty was already out the window with all their flaky accessories to the Genesis. They just kept adding on, and they were crap. They spent so much time and money trying to hype this 32X, but then they put nothing out for it. Mm. There's 30 games, I think. 32 or 34 games. Okay, and it wasn't... Like, the quality's not even there. I mean, It's really not. Um, I mean, it was part of it, yeah. I think Doom the Saturn... Now. How many times are we going to talk about 32X Doom today? That's like hey, the fifth time. Hey, hey, it's Doom, damn it. Then John Romero flushed his career down with Daikatana. Oh, is brought it, it back. Is this Battletoads? No, it's Doom 3. Is that what we're doing today? Yes. Like... Battletoads Doom 3. Let, 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 we'll have them fight it out. Who will win in the death battle? I don't think that's our channel. All right, well, Those guys don't even own it anymore. No, <laughs> not really. Now. But yeah. Um, personally, in like a retrospective way, there's a lot of good games on the Sega Saturn, but... Expensive. Yeah. Not all. Most. Like, 80% of the good ones. Like, the, the Mega Mans that are on the Saturn play better on the Saturn. Uh, it's debatable. A lot of people say 8 is better on PlayStation. Uh, I'm not saying that because he has X4 on the Saturn. No, I actually do prefer playing X4 on the Saturn. I prefer playing 8 on the Saturn, but... I prefer just not having a Saturn. Yeah, <laughs> we know, John. But it can play your CDs, John. Yeah. And it was weird. I like my my uh, aunt who I used to hang out like I would hang out with her at her house every weekend. But that donkey gone country. Her son had bought a Sega Saturn. I was like, cool, I get to play this. And then he took it up to his room and never played it. That's the... what I did with the Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> now you can play Cuphead. That's the only reason. That's the only reason I want one. Well, my Xbox One's in the kiosk. <laughs> You're so gonna now... be at work playing Cuphead a lot. I don't want to link this to the internet when people can use it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, much. but you could link it, download Cuphead, and then disconnect it again. I guess. Oh, I think that's it. Yeah, that, 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 that really is kind of the cutting point off of the podcast. Thank you, Network. I, we wish we could do this all day, kind of. I think we get tired of each other after a little while. I don't. Yeah. John but, does, uh, but I don't like yeah, people. Yeah, we, uh, we will be back. We won't have another podcast until the new year. Because this is... Well, we might... We no, have a week. We and then a, we're going... We it'll be Christmas break, Eve. But we have a week break. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we would have to do one on Christmas I, break. I, was like, I can't do one Christmas Eve. That's when I do if Christmas. We, if we keep to our oh, Sunday schedule. Oh, right. That's what I'm saying, though. We don't yeah. have to do one on Sunday. <laughs> uh, if, we, if we do one before the, the end of the year, it'll be on an odd day. But, uh... You know my schedule. Yep. So, uh... Cuphead's great. I I wanted to play it. Bye, Cuphead. It's, it's great. He's never played it, but he knows it's great for that reason. Who, me? Didn't you just no. say that? No, I want to play it. It looks great. Well, you said it's great. Like, you can't make that call yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I misconstrue my words all the time. You know that. I don't think that's the right word. Matt it's not. Matt Murray's been streaming it. Has he? And S ranking the S shit S out of that game. Every... He's starting to stream. Just go to his you. Just go to his Facebook. Facebook. He shares it all the time. I, I don't ever. Don't see that. <laughs> that was a Christmas present. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Rachel. So, all right. Well, I think that's it from us yeah. here at John's podcast. Sorry, um, John. Sorry, John. John. To be fair, you were the strong point this week. I'm so. always the strong point. No, you're not. Network, go watch the rest of them. Tell them who's, tell them who's the strongest. Don't do it. Don't do it. What's he saying? Uh, he read out loud what I said. <laughs> all right so but uh either way man and anyone else who decided to pop in tonight or watches this on youtube or yeah or watches this on youtube and we will be at the start of the new year um putting this up on itunes and all those other yeah um, well, well we'll have at least on itunes for download MySpace, zanga. <laughs> zanga doesn't exist anymore it doesn't vine oh. is coming back so is we'll it? it on vine yeah, yeah. oh my god I'm Tout, if you will Tout. second oh my god all right, either way. Uh, good night, or goodbye and good night. I can't even do my... Fucked it up. I hate you. Oh, my goodness. Can you, see, can you see what happens? Get out of I here. I just can't beat up. Get out of here. I'm I'm sorry. Guys. Sorry. Crap. Guys, don't go. We need, a, be- we need a better editor. The tab. No.